two, one, two. Uh, uh, uh. Hi everybody, welcome. My name is Perry Smith. I'm here at Guitar World and today I'm going to be uh, talking to you guys about some tips for jazz guitar playing. Uh, alongside me is an awesome bass player named Matt Aronoff. He's joining me today and um, we're going to get into some jazz techniques for you. Uh, I wanted to start out by saying for all you gearheads out there, um, I'm really happy to be playing my Gibson ES-175 with one of my favorite amps on the market right now, the Hendrickson Bud. If you haven't heard of Hendrickson amps, definitely check them out. This is a great uh, amp that only weighs about 12 pounds and gets a wonderful sound. I also have some pedals that I use, the Line 6 DL4, uh, the TC Electronics Hall of Fame, uh, the Ibanez Tube Screamer, and of course, my Polytune. Where would I be without it? Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to the jazz guitar playing uh, the first couple tips that I wanted to demonstrate are uh, trying to use more chords when you play lines. Uh, I think oftentimes guitar players get stuck in just using single note lines when they're solo in jazz. And I th think using chords is really important. It helps uh, break up your lines and uh, gives some more contrast to your performing. Um, the third thing, or the second thing I mean, I wanted to say is uh, using thematic development in your improvising. So trying to stick with an idea and develop it throughout your solo as opposed to just abandoning an idea and moving on to the next idea. Uh, this is a hard thing to do, but we're going to try to demonstrate it here for you over uh, one of my favorite standards. One, two, uh -uh, two. Thank you. 
So that was a, a standard, uh, old classic standard call that could happen to you. We were playing the changes on and really trying to focus on thematic development with our improvising. Uh, and also using more chords with our lines, which I think is really important to break up uh, the monotony of just playing single notes as a guitar player. Uh, I want to unpack some of this, um, some of these ideas about jazz improvising a little bit for you, and uh, kind of get into something more specific about the rhythmic subdivisions that we deal with uh, when we're performing jazz and trying to improvise in jazz. So uh, thankfully, I have Matt Aronoff here with me. Um, who lays down a great quarter note. And when you're improvising, you really want to try to lock into the bass, lock into the quarter note. And it can be challenging when you have piano players and uh, drummers and they're shifting the beat around. But listening to the bass is usually the most important thing. So one thing I try to do in my practicing is to make sure that I can perform uh, quarter notes well, that I can perform eighth notes, eighth note triplets, even quarter note triplets. 16th notes and 16th note triplets. So we're just going to kind of demonstrate those subdivisions over a rhythm changes tune at kind of a slower tempo here. It's really important with your guitar playing that you identify these subdivisions and you get comfortable improvising within each subdivision. So when you play freely, you can just intersperse them together. All right, here we go. One, two, uh-uh, two. Three, four. Okay, I'm going to start with quarter notes. Now quarter note triplets. triplets. Sixteenth notes. Sixteenth note triplets. a little fast with the 16th note triplets, but you get the idea. So when you're practicing, try to break it up into these different subdivisions to identify with yourself, how comfortable am I with eighth notes at this tempo? If I speed up the tempo, am I more comfortable with those eighth notes? Same thing with the triplets. That's, the, that's really the third tip here when it comes to some jazz guitar ideas. Um, the final thing I wanted to say, the fourth thing I wanted to say, uh, was transcribing. Transcribing from the masters is really the most important thing. It helps you get the language of jazz in your fingers and in your ear. And it also really improves your listening skills because the whole point of playing jazz with other musicians is listening and interacting. And transcribing is a really great, great way to improve your listening skills. So I think we'll play it out with um, a classic song that I uh, transcribed from Wes Montgomery called Impressions. Okay, one, two, one, two, uh, uh, uh.
Thank you, guys.